Hello everybody, happy Thursday. It is July 1st. Um, today's video, I'm going to kind of go through a sort of book wrap up for June. I did not do all that great, to be honest. I finished three of my books and I am still in the middle of my last two. So it's gonna be a kind of wrap up and a kind of how I'm proceeding through the last two. And I'm also going to open up my book of the month box with you. And I also got a little package here from Lit Joy Crate. It's a little add-on that I did and I'll open that with you as well. So I hope all of you are doing well. Um, if you are here in the States, happy almost 4th of July. I hope everybody's safe and I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. Hopefully it's a long weekend for some of you. Um, but um, yeah, here we go. So let's jump right in. So the first book that I finished was The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. So I'm just going to read you the back. That way you have kind of like a, a little idea of what this book is about if you haven't read it before. Um, so Barcelona, 1945. A city slowly heals from its war wounds. And Daniel, an antiquarian book dealer's son who mourns the loss of his mother, finds solace in a mysterious book entitled The Shadow of the Wind by one Julian Carrix. But when he sets out to find the author's other works, he makes a shocking discovery. Someone has been systematically destroying every copy of every book Carrix has written. In fact, Daniel may have the last of Carrix's book in existence. Soon Daniel's seemingly innocent quest opens a door into one of Barcelona's darkest secrets, an epic story of murder, madness, and doomed love. So, this book, I think I gave a five out of five. I adored this book. Um, this is a gothic book set in, um, again, 1945, kind of post-war era. Um, this boy and his father, they have a, like a secret, a secret, um, I don't want to give away too much if you haven't read it, but um, they have this bookstore and they also have a, a library that they, they keep books um, and they, they try to make sure no one forgets them. So in the process, he gets really tied up in this story of this author and the author's life and he goes through a lot the author goes through a lot um this book is very deep there are some dark spots in it there are a lot of trigger warnings i will say um there is um burnings beatings um incest there's fighting there's abuse um so there are things like that in this book however it's so good um some people may think it's a little slow because of the way it's written but it's just written in such a manner it's it's beautiful like the writing is beautiful um i absolutely enjoyed it and i enjoyed the twist in the story as well so it is a book about books and um i i thoroughly enjoyed it and i would recommend to anybody to read this book so again shadow of the wind by carlos ruiz zafon all right next book i read was shallow waters a novel by anita kopex this was actually an arc. Um, this releases, it goes on sale August 3rd. Um, it's a pretty short book. So if you're looking for a quick read, I'll read the back to you. This amazing, this book was absolutely amazing. Um, my only complaint is that I wanted more at the end, but either way, it's fantastic. I, I thoroughly enjoyed this and I do um, highly recommend this to everybody as well. So this book is Shallow Waters, imagines Yamaya and Arisha, a deity in the religion of Africa's Yoruba people. Cast into mid-1800s America, we meet Yamaya as a young woman, still in the care of her mother and not yet fully aware of the spectacular power she possesses to protect herself and those she holds dear. The journey laid out in shallow water sees Yamaya confront the greatest evils of this era, transcend time and place in search of Obatala, a man who sacrifices his own freedom for the chance at hers and grow into a powerful woman she is destined to become. We travel alongside Yamaya from her native Africa and onto the new world, with vivid pictures of life for those left on the outskirts of power in the nascent Americas. Yamaya realizes the fighter within, travels the underground railroad in search of a mysterious stranger, Obatala, and crosses paths with icons of her history on the road to freedom. Shallow Waters is a nourishing work of ritual storytelling from promising debut author, Anita Kopex. So again, I loved this. So it's kind of her journey through um, slavery in America and um, how she kind of 
has her eyes open to everything that goes on um, where her world was so much different. Um, she truly does find love and she finds, you know, hurt, but also hope and everything. So a really, really amazing book. And I think if you get a chance, um, it's definitely a quick read, but it's so, so touching. It's such a good story. Um, another book that I finished, um, this was Unearthly. I lost this in my TBR game. Um, I will say though, this is by Anita, uh, I'm sorry, Cynthia Hand. Um, I was shockingly surprised by this. So this is kind of a YA type of um, fantasy book. Um, I thought it was going to be a really kind of cheesy knockoff of like Twilight, but it's actually not. And it was actually surprisingly really good. And I actually lost um, the second book of this. I lost my TBR game for July, so I don't get to read it yet, but I will soon. Um, the beginning, or I'm sorry, the back of this, um, it says, in the beginning, there's a boy standing in the trees. He's around my age in that space between child and man. Maybe all 17 year olds, maybe all of 17 year olds. I'm not sure how I know this. I can only see the back of his head, his dark curl, his dark hair curling damply against his neck. There's a strange orange light filling the eastern sky. There's a heavy smell of smoke. I take a step toward the boy and the ground crunches under my feet. He hears me. He starts to turn. One second and I will see his face. That's when the vision leaves me. I blink and it's gone. So this book was really cool. It's about Clara and she finds out that she's part angel, part human. So, and this is kind of her journey through fulfilling her destiny, if you will. Um, and it kind of goes through her making choices and learning about her, her angel abilities. And um, it's not, it's not cheesy at all. I thought it was very well written and I actually really enjoyed it. I will say it is, um, it's very, very quick. Um, I know it looks chunky, but it's the text is very large, so it's definitely more of a YA novel, and it's um, super fast. So if you want something cute, light, um, but still has a good storyline, um, yeah, I, I recommend this one. So Unearthly by Cynthia Hand. Now, on to the two that I should have finished, and I did not um, yet, I will say. So I am just about halfway through this, and this is Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. I freaking love this book so far. Um, I have finding it hard to put it down even though I'm not done yet. Um, I've been really busy with work and other things so I read this right before I go to bed. Um, so I've been trying to squeeze in some but I'm going to try my best to finish this tonight or tomorrow. But I love this book. I love all of his books actually. Like I read Artemis and I also read The Martian which is the more popular one that turned into a movie with um, Matt Damon. But I love his writing because I love um, sci-fi. I love books set in space. I love the fantasy aspect. Um, but it's it's like he mixes like could be reality situations with sci-fi mix. So this book, I'll read you the synopsis here on this one, is um, Lone Astronaut, an Impossible Mission, an Ally He Never Imagined. Rylan Grace is the sole survivor on a desperate last chance mission. If he fails, humanity and Earth itself will perish. Except that right now, he doesn't know that. He can't even remember his own name, let alone the nature of his assignment or how to complete it. All he knows is that he's been asleep for a very, very long time, and he's just been awakened to find himself millions of miles from home with nothing but two corpses for company. His crewmate's dead, his memories fuzzily returning. Rylan realizes that an impossible task now confronts him. Hurtling through space on his tiny ship, it's up to him to puzzle out an impossible scientific mystery and conquer an extinction level threat to our species. With the clock ticking down, he's the and the nearest human being light years away, he's got no, he's got to do it all alone. Or does he? An irresistible interstellar adventure, as only Andy Weir could imagine it, Project Hail Mary is a tale of discovery, speculation, and survival to rival the Martian while taking us to places never dreamed of going. So yeah, it's his typical in space novel, but it's so awesome how he writes these things where you could like picture this stuff like really happening in real life and it is kind of scary, but he puts humor into his books. He puts like hope into his books and um, I, I'm so enjoying this and I already recommend it. I already know most likely the way it's going, it's going to be a five for me. So there's that one. Um, the last book, I am only about a quarter of the way through if that. 
Um, and this is The Stones, the acclaimed biography by Philip Norman. So this is what you think it would be. It's, it's a um, biography about the Rolling Stones. So right now I'm kind of on their journey of them becoming the Stones. Um, prior, I was, it was about them up and, being up and coming. They've been doing a lot of clubs and a lot of like, you know, speakeasy places. They're rivaling with the, the Beatles for Spotlight. Um, they're finally just now going on concert tours. So if you're into like rock biographies, which I love, um, this is really good so far. So hopefully I will get this finished within the week. So those are my June books that um, I should be done with, but I'm not. So I'm gonna be already behind for July. What's new, right? So what to do next? Um, let's go Lit Joy Box. So this was an add-on I did with Lit Joy Crate, who is a book subscription box. Um, I normally do get their subscription, however, um, I think I just canceled it just due to the fact that I have so many and um, it's pretty pricey. But they do have these really cool little add-on shops that you can buy little things like collectibles. Um, actually, I'll show you the other collectible I got. One second. Where is it? Oh, yes. So they have this collection and... I believe it's called the Whimsical Collection, if I'm not mistaken. Um, anyways, um, so this one is Anne of Green Gables by Lucy Maud Montgomery. And this is the edition that I got through Lit Joy Crate. And this is the cover, so it is going to be an illustrated version. I do collect Anne of Green Gables books, so um, it's so cute, so pretty. It's got a little, um, what do you call these things, a bookmark in here. Uh, if you've never read Anna Green Gables, do yourself a favor, read it. It's a classic. It's so good. One of my favorite books growing up as a child. Um, but you do get some little illustrations in here. Let me show you one, just an example. So this one's illustrated. So there's Anne in her with her red hair. So yeah, this was the first book in their collection that I got for, I want to say it was the Whimsical Collection. I could be wrong, but anyways, there's this one. I got the second book in this series, and oops, it's spilled. Oh, what's my tea? I ordered tea, so this is Secret Garden inspired tea. I love tea, loose tea, bag tea. I don't care. I love hot tea. I love coffee. I love it all, but it's spilled a little bit, but it smells good. So it's raspberry vanilla loose leaf tea with raspberry pieces. This unfortunately is caffeine free, but this will be nice for right before bed. So it comes in a little tin. So once you're done, you can like use this, um, wash it out. You could use like it to hold bobby pins or safety pins or whatever else, or just display it. I'll probably just display it on my, my bookshelves back here. But again, look at that, super cute. Okay, and if you can guess, um, let me shake off the tea leaves that fell out in here. So, this is the new book. Okay. There is tea all over it. I'm so excited. I've been waiting for this for so long. All right. Oh, super cute. I was not expecting that. That is so cool. So they always send you little stickers because if you have a little passport book, you can kind of put your little stickers in your passport for little things that you purchase. But they sent a little bookmark. How freaking cute is that? I love Wonderland. So there's Alice, there's the Mad Hatter, and then the Queen of Hearts with the rabbit. And then it says Adventures in Wonderland. This is super cool. This is artwork by at Sarah Conradson, Conradson. So if you want to see it right there, sorry, it's a little blurry. Do, do, do. If you want to snap it, if it's clear enough, how cool. I love that. What a cool bookmark. So anybody that likes Alice in Wonderland, um, that's a really, really cute bookmark. All right. And then they always send you a little cart. Um, they send you a little card about your book. So this is going to be the Secret Garden. This is this edition. Um, they give you a little letter um, talking about um, the Secret Garden. Just gives you a little 
snippet there. This is the Secret Garden Edition. How cool. So these are um, side by side. Got this one and this one. There's a little collectible. So cute. I love this. These, what a genius idea. So look at that. Such cool artwork on that. And this is The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett. So again, another book. Um, I adored this movie growing up and there's purple sprayed edges on this with another little cloth bookmark in there. Again, this is probably has some illustrations in here. Yep, so you got some little illustrations. How cool. So yeah, that was my exciting new book purchase from Lit Joy Crate. Um, my second book in this series, I think, if I'm not mistaken, another one is going to be The Little Princess. I think that might be the next one in this, but I'll have to double check that. But either way, I'm getting it because I love these. So cute. So yes, that was my Lit Joy Crate items that I really, really like. Okay, and my tea. I'm going to have some of this later before I go to bed. All right. Last but certainly not least, I love this book box. If you guys are in the States, I don't know if it's, um, if you can get these outside of the United States yet, but this is less than $15 a month. And then you can have a choice to add on up to two more books in their releases. So every month they release like five or six different books that you can choose from. Um, or you can skip a month if you don't want to, if you don't see a book that you're interested in, you can skip. So um, and any book you add on is 10 bucks, so you can't beat that. You can barely buy new books for 20 or $30 these days, at least here. So, and these are always like pretty new books or they're um, books that haven't been released yet or they're debut books, um, but they're in all different genres. So if you guys have never used them before, give it a try because it's worth it. The books are always really cool. Um, the first one that I chose was Razorblade Tears, a novel by S.A. Cosby. So I don't think I've ever read a book by him before, but this is kind of, they always have their book of the month logo. Um, this book says, a black father, a white father, two dead sons, a quest for revenge and redemption. Ike Randolph has been out of jail for 15 years with not so much as a speeding ticket in all of that time but a black man with cops at the door knows to be afraid. The last thing he expects to hear is that his son Isaiah has been murdered, along with Isaiah's white husband, Derek. Ike had never fully accepted his son, but is devastated by his loss. Derek's father, Buddy Lee, was almost as ashamed of Derek for being gay as Derek was ashamed of his father's criminal history. Buddy Lee still has contacts in the underworld, though, and he wants to know who killed his boy. Ike and Buddy Lee, two ex-cons with little in common other than their criminal past and their love for their dead sons, band together in their desperate desire for revenge. In their quest to do better for their sons in death than they did in life, these hardened men will confront their own prejudices about their sons and each other as they rain down vengeance upon those who hurt their boys. Provocative and fast-paced, Razorblade Tears is a story of bloody retribution, heartfelt change, and maybe even redemption. How good does that sound? Sounds like a tearjerker. I'm going to cry. And then the other book, I'm about to get cut off on my video, but the other book I got was The Maidens by 